All right, dudes, start our first of two super Spicer speaking guest segments with a bit of a plug. New issue of the SCGA's four magazine, spring issue, spring issue, summer issue. Darn it, I better actually check on that. Uh, actually, it's, it's got to be spring. Uh, that came out in recent days. A few Spicer pieces in there, profile on David Lipsky, who's enjoyed an interesting journeyman career, having success this year on the PGA Tour after playing a lot in Asia, in Europe, Corn Ferry. You can find that Spicer in there. You can also find a piece called Leg uh, The Legend Legacy and Looking Forward at PGA West. And I mentioned as much because along with some historical photos of the property, Includes an awesome new aerial drone image of Alcatraz, number 17 on the stadium course, from our friend photographer Johnny Hennebry. With that long preface, Johnny, welcome back to the Spicer Speaking Podcast. Thank you for having me, John. I'm glad to be here. Love that photo of Alcatraz. Certainly going to talk about that. The new drone, the new drone work, the upcoming work. Probably start with a congratulation. I missed, I uh, mentioned it rather, a recent show. Nice accolade for the uh, for the Hannah Bree photography work from the Indian Wells Art Festival. First place showing, I think that was last month, correct? Yes. Yeah, that's very nice. Was, Kudos, uh, man. Was yeah, it a golf uh, golf image or was it one of your other? No, work? it was a it was an actually an image from India. Uh, okay. Holy man. And uh, the judges just, they just fell in love with it. And there's probably six other photographers in the show. It's a huge art show. Big show. People come from all over to show their work there from all over the country, actually. And it's juried. So uh, I'm in next year. For, I don't have to jury because I won first place photography. So that's, <laughs> <Certainly wanted laughs> that's to... taken care of. Yeah. But uh, all the other there. guys had to wander over during the weekend, all the other photographers, and check out my booth. So that was kind of, you know, that was nice. Yeah, man. Well, definitely wanted to mention that uh, that accolade. Uh, I'd mentioned it once before, but wanted to get it in there again while I had you on the program. You and I have talked a lot away from the microphone about the new drone. I mentioned that photograph uh, in the new four magazine it's got your name and credit deservedly on there a new photo i've seen you post uh that i shared out on the spicer speaking facebook page of an incredible drone shot at the quarry at la quinta before specifically talking about that photo let's talk about the drone man. correct me if i'm wrong i can be a technical idiot as you well know the sony air peak s1 do i have that right yes you do this is a new toy and tool for you, correct? Yes, it it is. It's the it came out. It was released in these taking orders in December first and came out in January. So I've been watching it for probably a year before that. I wanted to get a larger camera in the air than the than the regular DJI drone, than the Inspire or the uh, Mavic Mavic Pro. They're they're just giving me a. a four thirds chip, not a full full frame chip. So I was looking at the DJI Matrice 600 to carry my Fuji camera full frame up in the air, but at six propellers, it's a massive, massive drone and it's just too much to deal with. So then Sony starts writing about and showing videos of their new product that's four propellers. It's, it's a big drone. It definitely gets people's attention. There's no doubt of it, which is kind of fun in a way. <laughs> we, we got to meet three NFL running backs at Pelican Hill last week. They just stopped and uh, we had a great time with them and talking and kibbutzing and uh, whatever. And they were, all, they were all enamored by the drone. And uh, that's happened more than once since I've gotten it. But anyway, uh, so I was one of the first guys to order. I ordered at the, I was shooting at Pebble Beach with my sister on December 1st. We had huge waves and we we're shooting the little DJI drone. And uh, my a camera company, my camera store in New York sends me an email says, we're taking deposits on the Sony. That was at lunch. And if, if, if that well, one day I wanted to have that Sony was that day at uh, Pebble. The waves were huge, the sun was out. 
and we were getting angles we have not gotten before with that with the drone I had there that day. And uh, so I just put the deposit down right away that morning on the thing. I got one of the probably one of the first twenty in the country. And as a coin, it's carrying a full country. frame, okay, sixty one megapixel Sony seven R four camera, game changer. It's it's uh, it, you know it's going to be it makes forty by fifty inch prints, but it's not that easy. There was some technical issues having the first one having to go up talk to the sony engineer twice with the drone up in la thank god that's the place where they do all the stuff in the whole country is la so i can drive up there and just threw it in the back of the car and drive up there they squared me away they were great okay so i've got it dialed in now and i got uh first job was pga west i've actually had a few jobs from pga west they've been great to me and uh then I got Toscana uh, and uh, Corey. And now uh, Tom Fazio's volume two book is coming out. Okay. And I'm going to be picking up co courses for that, which I just did El Dorado on the weekend. Talk about a fun place to go. Oh, yeah, so man. Um, just, I, I love I, that place. I've gotten to I, go there before, but. Uh, <laughs> no, I know from talking with you, it, the last month or two that you have been moving around avidly. I want to get to some of these future courses and shoots in a second, but just to touch again upon what this drone is bringing you as a compare and contrast from what you were working with before to what this is enabling you to do. I mean, from what I gather, correct me if I'm wrong, it's bigger in size, so you can put a bigger camera on there than you yes. could before? Yes. yes. Okay. Much bigger. A full... Uh a full frame 35 millimeter camera which okay you you had to put you know to do that before you had to get the matrice 600 huge and just uh, just way beyond you know doing okay. it. so yes that's that's the biggest game changer of it you also mentioned having to chat or i had a few questions for the the sony people um i mean is it a whole new start to educate yourself or re-educate yourself oh on God, how to learn yes. how to work a new drone or this drone? Well, first of all, I knew I was getting that. I, I knew I was going to get this drone. I had the little drone. So I went and got my 107 license last summer. That was a, I had a study for that. And uh, then I was hoping they were going to take my Fuji camera was going to, that I've been using for years, uh, which is a hundred megapixel. I was hoping that was going to fit on the drone, but no, it's locked out by Sony. So then I have to go learn the Sony system, the 7R4, which is not that bad, but I took a class and it was not that bad. And uh, then I have to, then there's all these little tweaks because you have to get that Sony camera onto the drone, onto the gimbal. And okay. gimbal, it took me a few times to figure out to get my files dialed in at 100% sharpness that the drone, the gimbal has to be balanced perfectly. So Sony, this young guy that works with Sony, he's a freelance Craig, he, he really helped me on that and balancing the gimbal. And that was a whole learning. Plus my wife is very helpful with me and she's much more patient than I am. <laughs> yes, we could do an entire show. Exactly. That too. So she, uh, without her, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be flying it, but I've got, we've got it dialed in now. And so that's what the exciting part is coming up, what we're going to be doing with it. I mean, I don't like to talk dollars and cents on this program, but I know it's a valuable piece of equipment. It is a substantial investment in your work. I mean, as you're practicing with a new drone, with a, a piece of uh, technology like this, how do you practice so you don't crash it? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> practiced with, I, I, well, we, we had problems with the gimbal fitting onto the drone, which wasn't our fault. And we thought we were doing it wrong, but we went up to the engineer at Sony and no, we weren't. It was a bad, it was a new rubber piece on the gimbal. This is all new for Sony. So there's all these little things and he, he got that dialed in for us. And, uh, you know, little things like that. Yes. Uh, practiced a lot without the camera and the gimbal. That was really pretty easy because yeah. I already know how to fly a drone. So that was, I got used to the controls and the, and the, and the, the touch of the controls, the feeling of them are different than my other little drone. So okay. I got used to all that. 
Yeah, my heart still starts when I get up to, uh, <laughs> you're not supposed to fly over 400 feet FAA. I get up close to 400 feet at Desert Island for a look over of the whole complex that Miguel, the new owner wants. And my heart's going like pretty damn fast, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm right by Sunny Lands, way over the, way over the, pro, you know, but it all sure. loved it. It came out, it was great, you know. So, um, again, I, I want to get to the courses specifically in a second. One more, I guess, on the, the technique of the drone. I mean, what I'm noticing from the new photos that I've seen, whether it be what I've seen from PJ West or what I've seen you shoot at the quarry in La Quinta. It, I can tell the difference of the quality, first off, just having looked at so many of your photos. But I'm correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like what I'm also noticing is a bit of a different angle that you are doing so well. Look, there's a lot of dudes that are quote unquote photographers or claim to be photographers and they have a drone. And what I'm noticing from a lot of their photographs is, is kind of an on top aerial point of view like really like coming straight down on a, on a golf hole from a like from a clouds point of view what i noticed that you're doing i don't want to put like a degree of angle on it but you're coming in from like the golf balls point of view is that that's what i'm seeing in the photographs that you're taking now so it's not right on top it's not straight on like a traditional golf photo. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. And to me, it looks like from the perspective of a golf ball. Am I imagining that or is that? No, perfect? you're right. You're correct. That's kind of, that's exactly how we started our career. How we really did. We used to get the guy, we used to get a lot of people to hire us. would hire a, we, because of Joe Walser at Landmark Land Company, we were shooting out there right in the beginning of the stadium and he there was an open party for everybody all the members i was a member and he pulled me to the side and said john try to get some elevation in your photos i'll give you i'll give you some money to to rent a, a high reach and we rented a high reach on 17 and went up like 40 feet and did the island hole and it was famous and it got all over and we had a lot of guys that the model we did without people with people for the for sunrise how you know home builders for landmark so we started renting asking when we were working directly with owners or the head guy if we could hire high reaches and we've more than not hired a lot of all over the country we would hire lift trucks with our four by five view camera for but you know the big format so th what this is yes that over the a golf hole, yes, that ha, that has its place. I think there's some very cool pictures like that, and that's you know I I will look at I I've been doing some like that, but I'm going I'm kind of my main bed, bread and butter like at El Dorado on this weekend is uh, shooting. It's like I have a lift truck in my cart. <laughs> I can and and I used to have to drive that lift truck down the cart pass with the permission of the superintendent not to rip up the golf course and then try to avoid golfers. Like they had an 8 30 AM shotgun on Saturday yep. morning at El Dorado. I got to be out of there by eight 30. I can't be driving a lift truck back on the cart pass. You know what I mean? So this is, that's, that's, what's cool about it. And I've got the same with the digital. I have the same resolution. I can make a 40 by 50 inch print from the Sony camera. So that's the, that's the game changer for me. Friends, you're tuning into episode 54 of the Spicer Speaking Podcast. Friend, colleague, world-renowned golf photographer John Hennebry is my guest, along with his sister Janine. You can check out their work online at the Hennebrys, H-E-N-E-B-R-Y-S dot com. Take a look at their Facebook page while you're at it. Speaking of that Facebook page, you oh, recently yeah, posted... Man. So, uh, okay, I don't use that one. I mean, I only got so many, but uh, you're probably right. I probably should add, should add uh, that one. Um, check it out on Instagram as well. Uh, whichever one you look at, be sure to observe this new photo that I shared, and we mentioned it a few times, of I believe it's the third hole at the quarry in, in La Quinta, generally regarded to as the top-rated course here in the Gulf-rich Coachella Valley. And this photo, it does a lot for me, man. I mean, I love, and we've talked about this, the textures 
and when you can incorporate different textures. And with this new drone, what you've done on this shot, and again, I really want listeners or for those watching on YouTube viewers to take a minute and look at this photograph. Don't just peek at it, but study it a little bit. I mean, between the sky, the clouds, the mountain, the turf, the desert uh, scrub and sand, there's so many different textures and colors in this photograph. Really, man, it's one of the, the finer shots I've seen of yours. I feel like in recent years, I gather that you're also pretty fond of it. Yeah, no, I love the shot. The quarry is such a special place to even to get to go to. And then you have the one of the best conditions. It used, I'm not sure where it rates uh, condition-wise, but it's definitely high in the country, if not the highest i mean undoubtedly yes and you, you um, did that with it with it with with the clouds were coming in with the sun on the, the right side of me and it was just i just knew that was you know oh my gosh just no it's just a special place there, there's it, pictures all over the quarry but i knew that one was one of the better you know yeah it's not yeah. not just gorgeous but it is really compelling golf photo in my mind for the reasons thank you I that i just it. mentioned Yes. Um, talked about PJ West, where you recently been, El Dorado, the quarry, all these with the drone. I know that you've been out to the coast some as well. Hey, man, I'm going to see you later today. We're going to knock it around for one final time for the season before your annual spring departure when uh, I know you go play grandpa a little bit. But this particular <laughs> spring, uh, late spring in the summer season is going to find you not just all up and down the West Coast but all over the world, correct? Yes. Well, not all over the world, but okay. starting, we're starting uh, here on the weekend and heading uh, for Pebble, then to Monterey Peninsula Country Club, which is going to be in volume two of the Fazio book, which is a treat to get permission to go to. Absolutely. Then to Band of Dunes, which we have permission to go to right after that. Then to my son's home in Port Townsend, Washington. Then to France. The old course at Cannes in France, we're hired to do that. And then to Ireland, and we have an RV rented, and we are going to spend two weeks and drive the entire country, you know, and do the most famous golf courses that we can go to. Phenomenal. Then we're busting over to St. Andrews for a week. So uh, they, uh, we're a little nervous. Hey, I think they have the stands up for the open. But there's plenty of golf courses, and we're within three and four, two, one hour from where we're going to be staying, and so, and we'll get something. We'll get something. In the old course, we'll figure it out. You will be there previous to the open in July. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. I, I leave Seattle on the 22nd of May, and I basically come back on June 22nd, uh, and I'll be in uh, the old course on the last week of that. Okay, uh, obviously. You are taking the new drone yes, with you that's on the these travels. I'm going. <laughs> that's okay. the reason I'm going. Yeah. Are you sweating that a little bit carrying this? I'm sweating. Uh, I'm sweating a little bit about um, parts. If something happens or something, there's all these plug-in cords, propellers, battery failure. You know, okay. uh, I'm a little yeah. nervous. It's like a lot of people always have backup. You know, if they're shooting cam still photography, they have two cameras with them, which I will have. Uh, and I'll have my tripod to do my groundwork. But uh, my sister's going with us. So it's all, all three of us are, are doing the trip. So okay. she's bringing her huge 102 megapixel phase one camera. That mixed with a drone. If everything works and nothing breaks <laughs> and the <laughs> weather's good. Yes, that's the other splitting part, you know. Well, I, and I didn't mean to make you paranoid about something. No, I don't. So I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll all go swimmingly, Johnny. Yeah. Uh, is there a special way or certain way to travel or package the drone when you travel? Well, with it? Uh, one lucky, very lucky thing was uh, uh, since I was one of the first adopters, and one, in fact, probably the first adopter in Southern California, the case company is in San Diego that makes cases for uh, the big drones. And he called me up and uh, 
basically said, I'll make you a thousand dollar case for free if oh. you let me, lend me your drone for 10 days. So I said, that was a no brainer, you know, okay. so now I have that. That's where it all fit. Everything fits in that case and that case rolls. So I'm not going to get a cart at a lot of these places, but this case has been, a, it will be able to roll out on, uh, on the fairways of, of Ireland and St. Andrews and put it together. It's not like putting it, putting in the back of my little electric car in the desert. It's all <laughs> assembled and I just drive up and put it into the golf cart. It's pretty easy. I got to assemble it every time we uh, walk out to the, like Bandon, I'm going to have to walk out probably. So when you go to the Irish or the Scottish courses, are there different licensures or different permissions that you need from the countries or the course brass to do drone photography there? Uh, it seems like, uh, well, I talked to my French general manager, the guy who's getting us over to Europe. And I just said, I'm on the phone with him. I just said, did we up front? I'm going to, he goes, we just come with your drone. I've had experience before. We're not talking to anybody in France. Okay. <laughs> it's like too much paperwork in <laughs> Ireland. Uh, I'm a, I'm a dual citizen. I'm a citizen of Ireland. That's right. So I'm an EU citizen. I don't think I'm going to have any trouble there with what I'm reading. So we're out in the country and on the golf course, not around that. They don't like you flying in Paris, any drone at all. Okay. Like, no. And uh, <laughs> I don't, think you, you know, they don't want you flying around Dublin or Belfast either. So we're out in the country. I think we'll be fine. I do. Will you be posting and sharing uh, these photographs yeah. along yes. the dusty yes. trail? We're going to do little snippet. We're going to get hip this time and do little snippet videos of our, why we're shooting and, you know, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to really kick it up on Instagram this for this trip for okay. sure. Uh, well, dudes, be sure to follow those spring and summer travels of our man Johnny Hennebree again. That's online at thehennebrees.com. I know the Facebook page, which you should uh, take a peek at and follow the Hennebrees. Also, the Instagram page. I guess I should know this, but I want to assume it's also entitled the Hennebrees. Yes. Okay. Be sure to give that a peek follow the journey with the new Sony Airpeak S1 <laughs> drone this summer. Always a pleasure to visit, talk about Thank this, you. talk about your work, man. Um, you got to check out the, uh, the way that your uh, new PJ West uh, Alcatraz photo looks in the new spring issue of four magazine. Always proud to have well, I a photograph that. like that next to yeah. uh, my words. We, we, we've worked together many times and uh, yeah. Yeah, exciting. Well, it's always it's always a compliment when the quality, when I feel like it's a really good article, when the quality of the photographs matches what I feel is the quality of the words. So great to team up with that as always. Uh, appreciate your time, man. And I will see you on the golf course later today, Johnny. Exciting. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Really do. All, All right. right have a good one. Bye.